And have you have you uh, witnessed the agile process uh, change, or has it just been that cloud adoption and DevOps has introduced new uh, implementations of the agile process? So, you know, agile. So first, Agile is not really a process. It's more of a philosophy or a way of thinking about software development. Mm-hmm. Um, Martin Fowler has, uh, has his description of Agile, which he calls the essence of Agile development, which I think is really dead on. He says it's adaptive rather than predictive and people-oriented rather than process-oriented. And I don't think that's really changed. I, Martin actually came up with that characterization before the term Agile was even coined. And I think it's still true today. And I think... Even today, 20, nearly 20 years after the Agile Manifesto was written, there are a lot of companies who just don't get it. Like they don't get that core idea of adaptability rather than predictability and people orientation over process orientation. So I would say the core ideas of Agile, no, they haven't really changed. But Agile is a big tent. Like what we do in Agile today is not what we did in Agile in 2000. Um, We're constantly bringing in new ideas. So Lean Startup by Eric Ries has come in. There's been a lot more work in the area of how do you do large scale development with Agile. So these ideas are always coming in. DevOps movement, of course, is taking XP's ideas of continuous integration, which is another thing that's sort of been misinterpreted over the years, and bringing it to cloud development and doing continuous uh, deployment and delivery. So I would say Agile's evolving as because it's always taking in new ideas, but the core ideas haven't changed. And I would say the vast majority of companies that say they're doing Agile have yet to adopt those core ideas. Let's circle back to your book because we're talking of large-scale enterprises here, uh, where you advocate the idea that organizations need to buy into the underlying Agile philosophy by investing in agility. So as we're down to the last month of 2020, so we're recording this at this, uh, December, our listeners might want to have an idea of what they can prioritize as they start the new year. So what's the best advice, apart from buying your book, of course, uh, that you can give them when it comes to investing in agility? Um, well, they should check out my book, uh, <laughs> at least because uh, until until it is published, I'm doing an open review. So you can actually see everything I'm working on for free and give your feedback on the mailing list because I'm an agile guy. I take feedback and I act on that and I iterate. Um, so it's all available online right now. Uh, if you go to jameshore.com slash S slash AOAD2 for Art of Agile Development, second edition. Uh, so you can see this stuff right now. And there is a chapter called Choose, uh, Invest in Agility that has, has these ideas in it. But if I were to, and I think all those investments in that chapter are important, but if I had to narrow it down to just a few, I would start with uh, buy-in. Uh, a, a decision to become agile is a decision is is not a decision to take lightly. It's a decision that requires people to change their behaviors and their habits, and that's the team members, but it's also managers and it's stakeholders. And you need those people to go into it knowing what they're getting into. So start with the buy-in, and then from there. Uh, remember uh, Martin Fowler's essence. It's people-oriented rather than process-oriented, and it's adaptive rather than predictive. So it's going to take the people time to learn. So make sure to account for the fact that your productivity is going to dip where you're going to learn, and it's going to be it's going to cause some chaos. And you should manage that chaos well, especially in a large organization. Um, put your people together on dedicated cross-functional teams that don't have a lot of dependencies on other teams, as we were talking about a moment ago. Um, And when you're thinking about how you do governance in your organization, do you assume a predictive environment? Do you assume that you're going to say that this is a project that's going to take a year and it's going to ship this thing at the end and it's going to take this long and cost this much? If you do, you don't want Agile. You want a waterfall style process. The decision to use Agile is a decision to say, we think adapting is more important than predicting. If it's not, don't use Agile. It's not going to do you any good. It's not meant for that. And there's more, but I'll, I'll stop there.